Hi guys, it's Paul. So, gonna do a bit of a different video than normal. Um, so, this video is gonna be on the various pick sets, single pin picks um, that I've owned and I use, etc. etc. Now, these are my opinions um, and my preferences. I'm not gonna make everybody else's, everyone's gonna have their own take on things, but that's, this is for those that are, have any interest or just want to inquire or have just got some interest in wanting to know okay now I'm going to show these in no particular order um, however the first one that I the first set I will show is going to be my go-to set which is a set that I always have on me now I've tested many picks over the years um, and I've always gone back to my same trusted set okay so this set I purchased probably in 2004-2006 now prior to that I had a majestic 13 piece pick set which to be fair was more than adequate when you first start even though this was upgraded a few years or a couple of years later um, to the 32 piece set the only thing that's been of any real use is the case um the actual picks themselves wasn't much different all they did is doubled up on some of them um so you didn't really benefit massively from buying the extra set but again for the money i mean i believe these were probably about 30 40 quid at the time when i bought them something like that now there's going to be mixed bits and pieces in here uh it's not all going to be majestic or stuff that you get in the kit but I'll try and talk through um, what I have got. Now I've got an array of tension wrenches in here. Um, so let me zoom in if I can. I'll do that in a minute. Okay. So I've got an array of tension wrenches in here okay now tension wrenches for all different kits and ones that I've modded and adapted to work for me I mean this one's all bent out of shape and typically that's probably one of my favorite tension wrenches and the good thing with that is that you can just bend it and reshape it and if you've got awkward door furniture to work around um, that's ideal Okay, so we've got a mixture of thick and thin, some that have got twists in them, some that are longer than others. As you can see, you know, that sometimes you've got to bend them into awkward shapes to work with what you're dealing with. Um, I'll get to that in a minute. So I do have a mixed amount of tension wrenches. Now, other than... That tension wrench there which I typically use on rim cylinders but these two here are probably my preferred for Euros I prefer twists in there so they're like feather tensions tension wrenches um, they're quite universal in terms of how they will fit in to a lot so obviously this one's a little bit thicker and wider compared to that one but these are predominantly the main two that I use for Euros. And as I said, that one's typically more suited for a rim cinder. But I will use either or for other locks. And then you've just got a mixed array in there that you've just over the years that you've adapted for different locks or situations that you get in yourself into. Now, my most favoured pick out of this the majestic set is going to be the hook pick now i've got quite a few in here as you could probably already see in there i've got more spares there okay this is my go-to hook pick okay it's got a shallow enough hook on it that i find that it suits me and what you will find is i prefer sprung steel to um stainless or anything like that for me and the fill i find this suits my picking style a lot better um, and this is why I've always come back to Majestic. Um, now, 
they're not the most comfortable to hold because you know they're not got rubber handles on them and i could do that myself but for me i don't know i i just i like them to be raw for the feedback okay when i put rubber handles on them i think for my picking style i find that you lose some sensitivity through the the pick the the rubber absorbs it and acts like a, a shock absorber so i'm not necessarily feeling everything through it um so that's why i leave them as raw as they are okay now don't get me wrong sometimes when you're picking a center and it's a nightmare and you start getting sores you do think oh i'm going to wrap a bit of tape around it but i just persevere um and, and it's always served me well um so going into it a little bit further when i said about when you first buy them you get duplicates they come without handles okay so what you can do is if you break this one you drill the rivets out and re-rivet them on i've never bothered um i'll just keep them in there uh, and i will use them as they are without a handle should i need to again not the most comfortable list but it just gives me options now i don't know where i inherited this some, some people call them bogota bogota whatever you want to call them i'm not a fan of raking i don't think there's anything wrong with raking it just it's just not a technique that i've spent a lot of time with um i i prefer to single pin pick i like to pick each pin separately as opposed to raking them so i've never really i have attempted to use it and i've had some success with it but i wouldn't say i'm proficient with that or that it's my favored thing but i keep it in the kit because it's just there it's another method to try should i need to um here is the scissor tension wrench so more for wafer locks mailboxes cam locks okay that is typically what i will use um, with the snowman so i tend to use the snowman now i've again i've got duplicates of stuff in there and then you've got what i call the eight ball i don't really use that one um i've always got by with using the snowman and them two together for me have always served me well um and i tend to just stick with what i know but again i keep everything in there because you just never know it's you know if you do break it or you, you're struggling you can, it's always just something that you can try with then you have the majestic with the much steeper hook on it now i can't say that i recall that i've ever used this but again i leave it in the kit because if i do get a keyway or a lock where i feel that a, a pin needs to be lifted higher than what i can with these then i've got it in there but again not really anything that i've utilized um i've got the city rake now I've, I've as i said i've attempted some of these but i it just doesn't suit my style and i can't say that i'm proficient with rakes but i don't dislike them i just don't use them enough and then i've got the s the s rake okay now i have had some luck with that even if it's just to help me get a lock into full set so i can make it get the cylinders to kick and then go in with a single pin pick to go and find the binding uh, pins or the uh, pins that are giving me counter rotation then i can go in separately and work on them now as you can see in there there's a mixed bag of additional like so what i do is the hook picks you get a lifespan out of them you know with any pick is going to break at some point and with the majestic stuff i tend to buy them in bulk of three and four at a time um, and just keep them in there i haven't bought any for a number of years now but what i will do is just order them in uh, when i think about it because what will happen is over a period of time when you've got a, a lot that requires a lot of tension and you're putting a lot of pressure through these these will start to create like a little bit of a gooseneck um you'll be able to see it a little bit clearer on this one You can kind of see where it's kind of started to create a curve this way before it goes back up that way and that's just what happens and you can straighten them out but once it's been straightened out again there's a weakness in that material so it'll just continue to be soft and keep being malleable until it snaps um so personally i just buy a few and if that happens <coughs> excuse me guys um if it happens then all i need to do is just go into the pick set and i've got spares in there um but again they last you know i could if i was just to have one in there it probably last me a year um but because i've got additional in there i'll just mix for them all um but 
I still keep that in there because that will come in useful for a certain lock. There might be one that is just playing up and I can go in there with that and it will just allow me to the very first pin or second pin and it will just strike through there and, and set the lock in the position that I need it to. So let's quickly load these back in now. I don't really keep them in any set order. Um, I'm, I'm not... Um, OCD like that as long as I know that they're in there I'll, I'll deal with it what I will typically do and I'll show you in a sec so the ones I don't typically use I just push in there but like the hook picks that I'll typically use so the I put them all back in there now haven't I let's grab one there so my hook picks I, I typically just put one of the hook picks there so it's just a hand and then the tension wrenches I'll put in after but I'll just them in their own place now i swear by these um for key extractors i don't know how clear this will be but you may be able to just pick up that it's got like a screw effect spiral running along there and a nice pointy tip i find that perfect for um extracting keys broken keys i can wind it in there and the screw thread will bite into the key and start dragging it out so i find that perfect for extracting keys as i said and that's that's all i really use I've, I've tried all the other things and i've not really gelled with them um and these are something that i've used for a number of years and i'm comfortable with them so i go back to them this some people may recognize it it looks like a, a tension wrench and i have used it as a tension wrench but what it really is for um, was Hoppy handles. Now, Hoppy made us, well, they still make a few variations, but the back plate of the handle would screw onto the door. Then you would push the handle. So one handle would have the spindle on it. Then the other handle would have a friction fit. So you push them together and like a spring clip would uh, grip on the spindle and stop the handles from separating. And then you would use this. You would put it in a little hole in the handle rotate it and it will spread the clip and that allow the, the handles to be pulled apart and you can guarantee whenever you needed one you could never find it and you damage screwdrivers and all different things trying to do it so what i decided to do is just put one in my kit so i've always got it in there and these were always in my pocket um, so when i was working i wasn't going to the van just to get that it's, it's just it's to hand it's small enough but again you can double it up and use it as a tension wrench um, which i have done so yeah, so that's Majestic for anyone who is interested, okay. Um, I think all of the wholesalers um, will stock these. Maybe not this kit, it might look a little bit different. Um, as I say, this is a good number of years old. I could do with updating it really, but I kind of get a bit sentimental with me tools. I don't like chucking anything away apart from broken picks. I, I don't tend to keep them, um, but you know... That's a bit sentimental and you know it fits in my pocket and i've always got that in my work trousers um which is handy this set i'll say a set is a bit of a mixed bag really um let's get these out of the way so in here i just have duplicates of um things or different ones that i've tried over the years now I keep these in the van, um, they're not something that I go to on a daily basis. But they're just something to go to to try if I, if I need to or if someone who I know is around me and they need some additional picks, you know, I've, I've got some here that I can loan them or give them. Now I'm not quite sure where this Savord set came from. They look very similar to the Majestic other than that they stain the steel. Now you'll probably see it more on this one. Okay. You could kind of see that that's kind of started to swan like here. Now this is one of the problems I find with stainless steel and for my picking style. I don't get the feedback through these that I like from sprung steel. So I find that these will bend quite easily and then once they bend they don't spring back they can tend to just bend and stay in that shape and then you straighten them and I just don't get the feedback through the the, the tool um, as I would 
with the Majestics, but I wouldn't write them off. It just doesn't suit my style, and, and that's all it comes down to. It just doesn't suit my style. Um, so again, these are pretty much generic of the Majestics. You've got your City, city Rake, your Snowman, the Eight Ball, the Snake Rake, the Diamond Hook Pick. You know, you've got a steeper hook pick. Now, I'd probably be inclined to use this one out of them all. Um, because the hook pick is a bit more steeper, but not as steep as the Majestic one. So that is potentially one that I would go to if I felt I needed it. So really, I should probably look at putting that in my Majestic pick set. But I know that if I need it, it's, it's in the van anyway. Um, and then I've got these HPCs. I can't recall where I got these from, um, whether I ordered them by mistake. Having two, I'm assuming it's something I ordered by mistake. Um, but again, you can see what's happened to them. Okay, you're getting that gooseneck, and the same on this one. Now, I've never really ever gelled, as I said, with stainless steel type. Um, so, from to both sort of do the same sort of thing, you can kind of see it kind of exa almost exactly the same. Um, but again, they're coming useful for cleaning out bits of crap out of locks or anything like that. So I'll keep them in there. You just never know. Um, and not only that, you can file these bits down and make them into like uh, feeler tools for combination locks and that. Then this set was a set that another locksmith started to make, and he didn't he didn't keep with them. I think he only made a small batch of them. Um, and he done them in different materials. Now, I can't say for sure why he did it, but I wasn't really fussed at the time. I just decided that I wanted to purchase a set. Um, and again, you've got your scissor wrench in there for, um, let's get these over there. I went for the scissor wrench for the wafer locks. I like that, so but I'll keep that in the kit. So there's a, a nice variation in the hook picks, um, but the material that these are made out of, if I remember rightly, was carbon steel, so they're very brittle, but the feedback through them was immense. Um, so I only ever saved these in my, uh, in my kit for when I felt that I needed them, and up to now I think I've probably used them maybe a handful of times. You can see some of the different variations on the wear on the on the hooks, um, and yeah, I've, I've found them uh, fairly comfortable to use. But again, if you're rough with these, they will snap because they 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 don't really have any flex in them at all, very minimal. Um, so I tend to not use them too often, but I'll keep them for good. Uh, and then this one is just a plain flag pick. Uh, I can't tell you where I got it from or how I inherited it. Just one of them things that somewhere along the line of whether someone gave it to me or, or what. Um, I couldn't tell you. But again, things like that. It's worth its weight in gold to keep. Um, keep them in the kit. Um, and then should you ever need them, you've got them there. Let's chuck them in there. Now... What I'll do is I'll stay on the single pin picks. I won't do dimples just yet. So I'll leave them to there. Now this set, I invested a lot of money in these. Okay, now they're not the most expensive picks out there, but at the time they were super expensive and they looked the part. Um, I liked the way that they were stored in the case. And as you can kind of see there, the huge array now this was the storm set can't remember the model number that was used for them there's going to be some that are missing there's only probably about four or five that are probably missing because uh, there's some of these pockets i remember were empty anyway um but some have been lost in battle some have been utilized for other things and some you've probably used and put them down and they've fallen into the black hole somewhere however i just didn't gel with this set at all Again, it's not stainless, uh, it's not uh, sprung steel uh, like the Majestics, but they looked, they just looked the part. And again, I've, I bought them with my eyes and my heart as opposed to my brain. So um, 
I can't really say that these have had the use that they really wanted because I just couldn't gel with them. Um, now I do like, to be fair, I did like the tension wrenches and I think it's the, some of the tension wrenches that are not in here, but I did like these style of tension wrenches. Um, but again, they're not something that I use all the time. I just find them more in awkward locks or because when you're tensioning, it's just nice to have a, a, a normal tension wrench. But these do come in handy sometimes for awkward, you know, when there's a little bit of uh, furniture in the way, door furniture, these will go in nice. Um, then you've got your more traditional style type of um, tension wrench, but with these flat handles. Okay, so they look more like a traditional tension wrench with a twist but then on like these normal flat bodies, okay? Now, again, them tension wrenches are fine, but I found because they're not the same feeling as a normal tension wrench, so, you know, although from the neck down, they kind of look the same, just I found with them, they kind of sit in the fingers a lot nicer, whereas that has to sort of sit across the hand and they don't flex in the same way. Um, and But again, I wouldn't say that they're crap, it just doesn't suit my style. Someone else would have this set and probably have used it and they get everything open that they need to. And there's no doubt that they wouldn't work. You know, I, I don't doubt that, but it just, again, just didn't suit me. So I've kind of kept it in some order. So you've got a variation in your S rakes. Okay, hopefully on the camera, they all show up pretty nice. Right down to these ones that you can barely visible. I mean, I'm not sure what sort of lock I'd use that on. Maybe a small four pin padlock or something. But from the variation in the heights, I wouldn't say that that's ideally suited. But I just, I, I don't know. But I suppose when you're paying out that sort of money that I did at the time, they've tried to put as much in there as possible to make it look like it was worth the money. But to me, I don't see the value in it now that I owned it. But... I can appreciate the work that probably went into this. Um, but as I said, I bought it with my, my eyes as opposed to my brain. Now these rakes, as I've already stated, I'm not really big on raking, so I can't say that they wouldn't work, but I'd imagine the variation in them, you're gonna get full sets from them and some of these normal West type rake ones. You've got your snowman and your eight balls and half a snowman, and then your uh, cranked half diamond, type of picks and the same here okay they're just basically a lot of them are copies of each other but just different angles um, then you've got your main typical hooks now this was you only got one handle which is a shame with this kit you only got the one handle in that set you could buy them additionally but they were quite expensive if I remember right? about 15 pound for the handles and all they were was a two allen little grub and screws that held two sandwiched the blade in and to be fair, it does feel quite nice, looks the part. Um, but again, you look at that hook. Now, this was barely used. And straight away, you can see the arc here. Now, I'm not a heavy picker by any stretch of the imaginations. So anyone who is a heavy picker, I'd imagine probably only lasted a matter of weeks. But you rest that down. I don't think it's going to be clear. There's a massive gap under there. So it's totally totally out of a line um, now this one I started to adapt okay so and it started to hurt my fingers so I wrapped just in uh, gaffer tape around it and I started to grind into this it was for a lock I'm still working on it and I've, I've managed to resolve it and it was for a lock that I, I many people might know what this is well I, I've got no reason not to say I started to make this for the Ingersoll lock um, so I ground a little step in there to sort of get onto the lever so that I could always tell where I am within the lock. Um, started to slim this down slightly to, to get into the, the padlock but, and it was going to be on a video but someone had already done a video on it so I decided I'd leave it for the time being and I'll go back to it and do another video on it at a later date just so that videos are not clashing and it's the same content. But yeah, so I just adapted one for an Ingersoll um, cylinder um, and then you've got like these tension wrenches which is I suppose the equivalent of the scissor tension wrench okay 
for opening wafer locks so you can get tension from the top and the bottom and allow you to get your pick in there your snowman to get onto them so quite a a, a big set um, but what I might look at doing with this is the, other than that one I'll probably take that out but the rest of them as I said I don't really use them so I may look at doing a giveaway with these um, because they do typically just sit in the van um, in this and I'll very rarely open them I mean up until probably about a month ago maybe six weeks ago or not, not even been when lockdown first came in um, first started is that's when I started with this so other than that it was probably two three years before I'd open this um, before and it was just purely to sort of make that get that out and make that so it's not something that I'd use very often so as you can sort of understand it's probably more used to someone else so I may look at just doing these in a in a giveaway I'll probably not earn my money back on these um, but that's part and parcel of it all up I don't think putting them on eBay I'd do very well out of it um, to be fair because I can't claim that it's a full set and it is used now moving on to another set of hook single picks or mixture is these now I think these are basically uh, clom because they tend to make a, a lot of these that one's just an obscure one dark green but I've just added it into this kit okay so again it's just a full set of mixed bag so you've got your rakes in here you've got your half snowman your full snowman your um, cranked uh, half diamonds so yeah you've got your cranked half diamonds a thick hook pick some rakes now the rakes are probably well I'll say you're probably the rakes are pretty good um, especially these flat type ones here not so much that one these are good for sort of raking some of the dimple locks out there and getting into a full set um, you know they're, they're fine for them you've got a nice thin hook pick now I have used these cylinder uh, these picks for things like Bannams or things with like quite tight restricted keyways where the Majestic just doesn't have that finesse in shape here so some of the hook picks out of this kit I, I have used and I do use it's not common but they're there and I, I do like these I'm not keen on the handles um, and again because it's not sprung still I'm not a massive fan of the feedback for them but they have worked for me in the past and there is something that I'm happy to use in the future so we've got a couple of cranked um, flag picks so one arches to the left, one arches to the right. So for left and right hand, dimple cylinders. It might not show up on camera too well, but they have a slight kick on them um, for pressing down. Some of these wafer rakes, again, not really ever used them. Mind you, it might, no, I don't think it was that one. I'll get, when I get to it, I'll, I'll say. So another sort of uh, dimple cylinder. There's these kind of rakes. Again, I've never really spent the time to say whether they're worth it. Now these, one of these, I don't know if it was this one or this one, I did use on a cheap digital safe that had a wafer lock. I put one of these in there and pulled it backwards and forwards a handful of times um, and it actually opened. Um, but it's one of the cheap safes, so it's no surprise it did work, but... I have used a rake out of this kit I remember on one of them so again another hook pick small wafer again not sure what sort of cylinder I'd use that on but probably a four pin padlock or something um, a bit of a rake another thin hook so yeah so there's a, a variation there um, now I think this was just a cheap set from Amazon or eBay years ago i mean they're not new i mean they're, they're going to be six seven years old at least um there's no real branding on them which is a shame so i can't really tell you on what they are but you'll recognize the handles uh, if you look online on amazon and stuff like that but they just say lockpick and locksmith on there um other than that that's really the only 
being on there, but I do notice that a lot of the Chinese ones that you pick online, I think they all come out of the same factory anyway, so they're all they're all the same. Um, but again, it just goes to show that you, I mean, I can't even pronounce that, but that's the, the name on there. Um, but it just goes to show that the most expensive ones, I mean, I think these were probably 15, 20 quid. And that was probably £175, I think they were. I don't know if that was 175 plus fat or whatever and carriage. But these have probably opened up more than these have. And I go to these before I'd even bother touching this. So it just goes to show that the expensive ones is not always the best ones. And again, it comes down to what you adapt yourself to. I mean, I'm sure if I spent the time, I could probably adapt to these. But straight out of the packet, they just don't suit my style. Um, whereas the Majestic and these, I kind of get on a bit more with them. Now moving towards the dimple side of things, I'm going to bring these ones in. Again, another cheap online purchase years and years ago. Um, pretty poor, and as you'd expect, I've probably used these a handful of times and I've had some success with it. I wouldn't say I've been proficient with this set, but it's just one of them things that are cheap. You purchase them. Um, sometimes you will have to adapt them. So this rake is very similar to some of that I've already shown you. Um, and for getting a lock into a full set, maybe not necessarily opening, but into a full set, it's ideal. I do like the handles. Um, they do feel nice and Better than the big solid plastic things I found at least more suited to me so I do like that but the other rakes I probably wouldn't use um, I mean some of these I don't even know what locks they're made for this one I don't know if it will show on camera it's kind of got a groove right down the center um, so it obviously rakes off of a walled-in of some description but I've not found anything in the UK uh, to date that that will work with but again, it's just one of the things that you'll always find a use for stuff, you know, whether it's for even clearing out crap out of locks. A couple of flag picks, they're not kinked really, not something I'd use, but then I can always, if I break anything, I can always just adapt them, grind them down to suit my need at the time. But again, I think these were probably only about 10, 15 quid. Um, Probably not had nowhere near the use that this set has, but again, it's worth just keeping in the van. You just never know. Um, I mean, I don't like to have too much in the van because obviously it all weight mounts up and weight, but sometimes that's all it is. I've owned a couple of sets of these. I think the last, the first set I lost somewhere or left on a job, I believe. I mean, I'm pretty good with my tools typically, but I think this fell out somewhere or I caught them and they fell out my bag or they fell out the van or something or other because I've never been able to find them. They're about 35 quid I think they are and they were the Suba uh, dimple. They're, they're actually made for multi-lock cylinders so I think it was more for like Garrison and the classic and the pin and pin type cylinders that multi-lock uh, multi did. Um, I've had a lot of success with them so when I lost the first set that's why I purchased the second set because I knew that they worked. Um, so again you get a nice variation and these flags have got so that you can pick the outer pins without interfering with the inner pins so that's why you've got that semicircle sort of nipped out of the, the hook in the flag um, and then another one where it's kind of cranked so you get a little lip so that's for getting the inner pins so when you get a cylinder that's got a pin inside a pin this one would be for the external side and then you get the one for the inner pins and then it's just a, a mixed bag really and then you have the, uh, a, a double end one so you've got a thin end there and a thicker end so that's again for different diameter pins uh, for that one work on inner pins etc but I've used them on other things other than uh, multi-lock so again it's not something that you have to have um, only for multi-locks you know you can adapt them and use them on other locks I've used them on Altian and um, prior to me getting the other picks and things but you know I've opened up a whole array of dimple locks with them so 
worth investing in. Um, there's, as I say, there's Suba, um, multi lock dimple picks. This set, a cheap set, uh, I think probably a lot of people will find these again on the typical lines of Amazon. Um, now I bought these super cheap, worth purchasing for just for playing around with. Um, I had a lot of success with them, but they're not my favourite. Okay, what I do find is even though when you nick these up, if you get one quite a stubborn one, and you pick in, this will slip around um, because it works on like a pin vice type of thing. So that when you tighten down the handle, it bites into the the tool and grips it. But I just find them. Um, it's not a great fit. Maybe a, a, you need a bit more of a packing piece down there to get them to work nicely. The good thing with this is it, I'll take them, move the tension wrenches out of the way, um, is they came with different tips. Um, you know, instead of having multiple different handles, you just had multiple different tips. So different size flags. You know, you can see there, a thicker one and thinner one. Some are designed for left hand side of lock, some are designed for the right hand side. Okay, so different shapes of flags are suiting different styles of locks. Again, opened an array of locks with these, Cease Astral, um, Multi-Lock, the whole range of Multi-Lock of Garrison, um, MT5. What else have I done with it? I would have done Altman and ABS, putting the magnet in separately before I got all the dedicated tools. So prior to me getting the two-in-one type picks, this is the sort of stuff that I would be using for opening dimple cylinders, dimple padlocks, etc. Um, well worth keeping in the van. You know, if you can stretch your money to buy yourself a set of them, uh, you won't go far wrong. But then moving on to these. Now, these two are essentially the same kit. I was given these um, by a GJ Locks. I think he purchased them. He wasn't a massive fan of them, so he gave them to me. And I liked them enough that these ones cropped up and off. They were silly money, really, really silly money. And I had a gift voucher to use up. Uh, I think it was like a £5 gift voucher that I got from somewhere or other. And I decided, well, I'm going to buy another set because if I ever break the tips of these... Or I can have a, a set in my pocket, a set in the van, etc. You know, and I just had duplicates. Um, one thing I do like on these is the thickness of the handles. I like the knurling. Um, they, I prefer the pen type feel than the pencil feel. So, multi multi pick, um, the German company, they make some nice looking dimple picks. They make them really nice. But what I've noticed is they're extremely thin, the bodies of them. Um, and they have like black rings around them. If I if I remember, I'll put a, a, a screenshot up showing the ones I'm on about. And I have had a go at a uh, uh, play with them. But what I found is they're so small, it's like holding a pencil trying to pick. And when your hands and fingers get a little bit greasy or sweaty... They, you, you struggle to sort of grip and rotate. They kind of, it wants to slip in your fingers. Even though they've got like rubber bands on them, when rubber gets a bit greasy, it still slips. Whereas this, the knurling, bites into your hand and they're staying where you are. And the fact that they're a little bit thicker, it just gives you that little bit more extra leverage when you're picking. Um, and the fact that they're colour coded, you know which one that you want. So my most common two is the yellow and uh, the silver and the pink. So one's left-handed, one's right-handed. Okay, so depend upon what lock I'm picking. If I'm picking an Altian, I would be using this one. If I'm doing WXM, I'd be using the silver one. Um, but again, I've got the two-in-one pick, so these are not my go-to. So I tend to use these more for cylinders that um, I don't have a pick for, or obscure dimple locks that pop up or some padlocks etc keep the tension wrenches in there um, but for a sort of 15 quid whatever i mean even if you only have this set in your van the amount of locks that you can open with these for for how cheap they are 
again it, it just shows you don't need a massive mega expensive kit as much as i'd love to own the multi-pick set based on what they look like if i was to buy them i would be buying them with my eyes as opposed to my brain now i've not ground any of these down and shaped them to make them smoother or anything like that i should do really but for the amount of time i've used them it doesn't really want me doing that but I know some other locksmiths out there and I noticed the video that Lock Noob did recently. He um he ground his down um, um and took these sharp edges off of them and that was a you know it's one of them things I advise people to do if you if you've got the time to do it. And it's not so much I haven't got the time, it's just the time that I need these is very little, so I've just not bothered. But maybe one day I'll get around to to doing it and the same with that this is essentially the same kit i think there's maybe one broken in there yeah i think it's that purple one um purple handed one but again i've got the purple one there so it's you know i've i've got a replacement if i need it so i can adapt this if i need to um but yeah so hopefully that's been of some interest and it goes to show that you don't need super expensive um kit to get yourself started um, but if anyone's got any questions or, or anything like that then please don't hesitate to leave a comment in the comment section down below um, please like share and subscribe um, and i look forward to doing another video so thanks a lot guys cheers